So you're gonna climb Mount Fuji? Really? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to dress, what to take with you, what's the best time to go, some things you should never do, and which trail to take. The best time to climb Mount Fuji is a weekday in the first half of July before the school vacation starts. But the weather can be unpredictable, so make sure and check the six day forecast. I put a link in the description so you can see that. The worst time to go is between October and mid-June. It can be extremely dangerous, the weather conditions are unpredictable, there's a risk of snow, ice, and avalanches. Only experienced climbers should go during this time. Just know that the lodges will be closed, no doctors are available, and you must submit an itinerary before going. Getting there. There are four different trailheads. Depending on which one you take, you'll need to use a different bus and train. So I put a link in the description rather than trying to explain everything in this video. So which trail should I take? Now, before we get into that, it's recommended that you climb Mount Fuji over a span of two days. Go most of the way up, stay at a lodge, you'll need to make a reservation, and then go see the sunrise in the morning. There are 10 stations along the way, station number one being the bottom. Station five is where the trailheads actually start. You can get a bus up to the trailheads. And station 10 is the peak. There's the Yoshida Trail. This is relatively the easiest route. The trailhead is at 2,300 meters. It's six hours up and four hours down. More than half the climbers who climb Mount Fuji use this trail, 173,000 every year. Of course, it's the most crowded, but it does have the most facilities. There are many lodges on the ascending trail, first aid centers and doctors at the fifth, seventh, and eighth stations. There are vending machines and mountain huts. There are fewer facilities on the descending trail because it just takes less time to go down. A word of caution, about a thousand people take the wrong trail going down every year. There's a small sign at the Sta Eroya mountain hut. The Yoshida trail goes to the left and the Subashiri trail goes to the right. Now, if you're going home directly from Mount Fuji, no problem, you just catch whatever train you end up at. But if you got reservations to stay at a hotel, an onsen, maybe soak in the bath and rest your sore muscles, that's a problem because there's no transportation between the different trailheads. You have to take a taxi, that'll be about 200 to $300. The Suba Shiri Trail. The trailhead is at 1,970 meters. It's six hours up and three hours down. About 19,000 people take this trail every year. This leads to the summit on the east side of the mountain. Note that the Subashiri Trail meets the Yoshida Trail near the eighth station. There can be thick fog during the forested section of the trail, but one good thing is that the ascending and descending trails are separate. Next is the Gotemba Trail. The trailhead is 1,400 meters. It's a 10.5K hike to the summit. Seven hours up, three hours down. 15,500 people take this trail every year, making it the least crowded trail of all. The departure point is low in altitude and the slope is gentle, but that means it's the longest trail. So people who are in better physical condition can take this one. If you're not in good hiking shape, I would not recommend taking this trail. There are fewer mountain lodges than other trails. There are fewer toilets and no facilities for emergencies. One great thing is though, you can see the sunrise from a high altitude on the ascending trail. Remember that sunrise at this time of year is around 4.30 to 5 a.m. There are a few landmarks on the trail, so it's easy to get lost in the thick fog. But one plus side is the ascending and descending trails are separate. Next is the Fujinomiya Trail, and this is my recommendation. The trailhead starts at 2,400 meters, and that's the highest trailhead of all four. From station five to the top, it's only 4.3 kilometers. The trade-off is that it's steep and rocky. It's five hours up and three hours down, and around 50,000 people take this trail every year. Now one negative about this trail is that the ascending trail and descending trail are not separated. You might have to wait in line to go up or go down when it gets crowded. But one of the most amazing things about this is on a clear day from the Hoe Peak, you can see the Pacific Ocean. A lot of people take a picture here and turn around. The summit. Iconic Mount Fuji is the tallest mountain in Japan, 3,776 meters tall or 12,389 feet. Mount Fuji is considered an active volcano but it hasn't erupted since the 1700s. That tells me two things. Number one, it's either overdue for an eruption, or number two, it's a dormant volcano. Speaking of danger, I need to mention some of the risks. Altitude sickness is a problem on Mount Fuji. Now, if you get dizzy, nauseous, confused, take a break. And don't be afraid to turn around. There's no shame in doing that. Because of the cold weather, hypothermia can be an issue. Make sure and dress warm, and make sure and take some energy food, like almonds or raisins, or both. Now this may sound counterintuitive, but heat stroke can also be an issue. If the weather's hot and humid, make sure and drink water, but take small sips, don't gulp or guzzle water. Fatigue can be an issue. Make sure and train a little bit before you go. Some people say that Mount Fuji was no big deal, and they might be telling the truth, but some people say that it was absolute hell. Remember to take your time. 
take frequent breaks, and remember to breathe. Make a thorough climbing plan before you go, including reserving a hut. Now those fill up, so make sure and do that early in the year. And if you get too tired, don't be ashamed to turn around and go back. As a safety precaution, notify a friend that you're going to be going to Mount Fuji. Tell them when you're going, when you're coming back, and which trail you'll be on. And heaven forbid something happens, make sure you have your insurance card with you, just in case. Climbing Mount Fuji is a metaphor for life. It's one step at a time. Sometimes luck is involved. There are good days and bad days. A lot of that's out of your control. And not everybody makes it to the top. So what to take? A backpack with a rain cover. Proper shoes. The terrain is rocky. You need to have something that supports your ankles. Proper clothes. There are sudden winds. The weather can change on a dime. As far as rain gear, you want to have top and bottom because, believe it or not, the rain can come in horizontally. Be aware that Japanese sizes are quite different from Western sizes. It can be frustrating to go shopping in Japan, so maybe get something before you come to Japan. Proper gloves. They'll not only keep your hands warm, but the terrain is very rocky. Protect your hands. Bring a change of clothes. You might get rain on. The weather does change suddenly on Mount Fuji. And there's nothing more miserable than being wet and cold and stuck in the wind with no shelter. Get a headlamp. That'll keep your hands free. You could use a flashlight, but you want to have both your hands free. Check the batteries before you go. You can take an external charger for your phone. Now, when phones are out of service, they use a lot of juice searching for a signal. There's Wi-Fi available, but I mean, who wants to go to Mount Fuji just to use Wi-Fi? Take extra food. There are some lodges available and they do have food, even if you're not staying there, but you want to keep your energy up, so take extra food with you. Water. You'll get thirsty. Now you can buy water on Mount Fuji, but the prices go up the higher you get. Take a couple bottles of water with you and just be aware that you'll have to overpay for water as you keep climbing. Cash. Take cash in small denominations. And you also want to have maybe one or two thousand yen in hundred yen coins. The toilets are not free. You have to pay for them. It's two to three hundred yen for a public toilet and five hundred yen for a toilet at a lodge. You can also rent oxygen cans because the air is very thin, so you need cash to do that. Now, if you're a resident of Japan and you use PayPay, it is accepted at some places, but don't count on it. Sunglasses and sunscreen. There's no shade on Mount Fuji. Take a helmet with you. You can get hit by a falling rock, so just be careful. A face mask. Now, as you're descending, it can get very dusty, so you want to have something that covers your mouth so you can breathe. Heating pads. Now, these are called Hokkaido, and you can get them at most drugstores and some supermarkets, and they do keep your hands warm. Hiking sticks are optional. Now, some things you should never do on Mount Fuji. Never leave the trail. Believe it or not, people get lost every year. Even though 300,000 people climb Mount Fuji, people do get lost. Stay inside the ropes. Now, those ropes are not there to help you climb. They're just there to mark the way. Never pick or damage any of the plants or foliage on Mount Fuji. Camping is not permitted. You should make a reservation at a lodge. Like I said, do that early in the year. Of course, campfires are not permitted. Pets are also not allowed on Mount Fuji. Of course, littering is not permitted. Bring a trash bag so you can collect your trash. Take out everything you bring in with you and don't take anything you didn't bring with you. Other fun things to do. You can buy a hiking stick at the fifth station along the way, and there are places along the way where you can get a brand for that wooden hiking stick. Did you know there's a post office at the top of Mount Fuji? You can skip the line by buying a stamp in advance and mailing it when you get there. Surrounding Mount Fuji are five lakes. They're known as the Fuji Goko. Some people just go there and stay and get a view of Mount Fuji. If you don't want to hike, you can get pictures from one of those locations. So, when to go. The official hiking season is the beginning of July to the middle of September. The Yoshida Trail, which is the most popular, opens on July 1st and closes on September 10th. The other trails open on July 10th and close on September 10th. Since Mount Fuji is the busiest mountain in Japan, where over 300,000 people climb every year, you want to avoid peak season. From July 20th to the end of August, that's when school is on vacation, and the middle of August during Obon vacation, where people have time off work. Those are the best times to avoid. So if you're coming to Japan, but you don't plan on climbing Mount Fuji, but just don't know the best time to come, I've got a video about the best time to visit Tokyo. Watch that next.